Tony Khan made his weekly Busted Open radio appearance on Wednesday, and near the end of the show, he took time to address the perception that every match on the show needs to have a long storyline build to it, and he took aim specifically at Eric Bischoff. Bischoff was upset with Tony tweeting. This, this Let's take this back a little bit here. Because Bischoff has a lot of things that he critiques AEW about, and some of it is valid, and some of it just comes off as just him being grouchy. But let's go back about a year. It's about a year ago. There was a tweet that Tony Khan put out that WCW would still be in business on TNT and TBS if Ted Turner knew 1% of what he knows about pro wrestling. Now, from what I can gather, that was the comment that caused a rift in their relationship because they had a cordial relationship, friendship up to that point. Bischoff has made a few appearances on AEW television, although not since then. But that may have been what caused a rift in their relationship because Bischoff went on his podcast after that and he took aim at Tony for saying that. And it was a stupid thing for Tony to say because, you know, he knows his history. Tony Khan is not a stupid person. He knows his wrestling history. He's been a wrestling nerd, a wrestling mark for many years, right? Like many of us. And he should know that regardless of what Ted Turner did or did not know about the wrestling business or how big of a fan he was, it would not have stopped the AOL Time Warner merger from happening and Ted was being iced out of his own company. He didn't have the power at that point that he once had. He got squeezed out. Once that happened, WCW no longer had friends in high places. The ultimate friend in the highest of places. The people in power did not want wrestling on their networks, and that ultimately is what finished off WCW. WCW was already sick. WCW was terminally ill. Once they pulled the plug on the TV, that's basically when they pulled the plug. So even if WCW had lived on or been relaunched, as Bischoff wanted to do, they would not have been on TNT or TBS. This all started, by the way. Tony's original tweet was in response to a report that was floating around at the time about people internally in WWE complaining that Tony Khan overspent like Ted Turner did to compete with them and how we beat Ted Turner and Ted Turner is smarter than Tony Khan. That's what caused Tony to respond the way he did. He didn't just wake up one morning and said, hey, let me shit on Ted Turner. That was his way. He was responding literally to a Wrestling Inc. tweet that he, quote, tweeted when he made that comment. Those people in WWE who may have said that are idiots, too, for thinking that because Vince McMahon did not beat Ted Turner. I know that's their narrative and, you know, the winners get to write history the way they want to, but Vince McMahon did not beat Ted Turner. If he beat anybody, he beat Eric Bischoff. And frankly, Bischoff and everybody that came after him that were running that shit show that WCW turned into, they're the ones who beat WCW. And the merger just finished it off. But Vince McMahon always loves to gloat that he beat Ted Turner because it sounds sexier that way. It's like when he gloats that he beat the government. He does the same thing about... He's always had a bee in his bonnet for Ted Turner, going back decades. But in the years since then, Bischoff has levied lots of other criticisms at AEW, and Tony brought up one of those critiques on Busted Open. He said... Frankly, the person that has been the most incendiary, contradictory, and hypocritical on this entire point is Eric Bischoff. And then he explained that to him, to Tony, the good WCW Monday Nitros from 95 to 98 featured random lucha matches and other unexpected pairings. He said there was a certain exquisite randomness to the lineup of the card. There were a lot of stories happening in WCW, but probably less than half the matches on Nitro had a story going into them, and that was fine. It was the industry standard show. And he implied that WCW copied WWE's method of doing things where every single match had to be happening for a reason. He said his own reason for a seemingly random pairing could be the start of something new, or just a challenge to see who's the best. He said to see the person who probably put more cold matches on TV and did it successfully and did it well... Say that, it is an abomination to do it, is pretty contradictory. I definitely don't want to see fans get brainwashed into thinking that there's only one way to do this just because they've seen it done one way for a long time. There are times where the pairings feel very random on Dynamite, but I don't think it's it's too much of an issue anymore 
uh, than it was for WCW back in the day. It's like the people who say that AEW is nothing but matches with no stories. These are people who clearly do not watch the product. So I decided to take a look at this week's Dynamite as an example. The past is the past. Let's look at this week. Okay, This week's Dynamite, what did we have? We had Chris Jericho and Daniel Garcia against Claudio and Wheeler Yuta. There's multiple stories playing out in that one match. One of them is, I I think, the longer-term story of Garcia challenging Jericho, eventually, for the ROH title. You've got the Blackpool Combat Club, which they're now teasing dissension within the ranks between Brian Danielson and Wheeler Yuta, right? They got the win with Claudio pinning Jericho. That should set Claudio up now to challenge Jericho again to try to get his belt back. And if not... I'll be the first one to say that doesn't make any sense. In fact, Jericho's having an open challenge this Wednesday. And if Claudio is not the first man out there, unless somebody lays him out in the back on his way to the ring, if he's not the first man out that curtain, that's going to look pretty goofy. Okay, unless they have a damn good reason for it. But they won the match on Wednesday, and the first thing we saw in the back was Yuta getting up in Danielson's face again and telling him, you know, we just won our match, basically challenging him to go out and do the same later on in his match against Sammy Guevara, which he did. So that's two matches on the show that had a storyline purpose. We had FTR against Swerve and Our Glory to see who would get to challenge the acclaimed for the tag team titles. So that match served a purpose. They were crowning a number one contender. That now sets up a match with FTR that they have been teasing for weeks with them and the gun club who were sitting in the front row and prevented them from winning the match. We had Jamie Hayter beating Riho. Riho just returned, so you want to get her on TV. But Hayter got the win. Jamie Hayter is the one who's been getting over with the audience organically on her own. The people chant her name everywhere she goes, even though she's standing right next to Britt Baker, who they hate. You've got to find a way to get Jamie Hayter on TV and give her a win. Because it now looks like she's going to be next in line challenging Tony Storm for the interim women's title. And then we had, in the main event, John Moxley defending the AEW world title against Penta. Now, there was not much of a storyline reason for it, but I'm not complaining about getting a John Moxley-Penta match on free TV, especially when you know that Penta is not challenging for the world title at full gear. He's not challenging for the world title at Revolution or Double or Nothing. He's not going to get a pay-per-view main event for the world championship anytime soon. It is a first-time-ever match that we've never seen before. But in the end, even that match served a purpose. It served the purpose of getting John Moxley in the main event on that show. It almost didn't even matter who it was against because it set up the ending of the show with the firm attacking Moxley. MJF comes out, he fires the firm, and then MJF gets laid out, which I'm guessing sets up the whole can they coexist tag team match with Moxley and MJF against the firm at some point in the next few weeks. That was the show on Wednesday. Everything served a purpose. My one critique, especially with Penta challenging Moxley for the world title, they need to get rid of any pretense of having rankings in this company. The rankings do not exist anymore. They have a ranking section on the website that has not been updated since August 31st. Get rid of them. Take the page down. If you're not going to update them anymore, I don't know why that link is even up. Take the whole section down. 